Hello, thank you so much for visiting my website. Today I'd like to read to you from one of my books, Incident at the Pink Beach House. Brandon Sterling, a high school teacher in the small town of La Verde Beach, Florida, is intrigued by a two-story pink beach house on a secluded area of the beach. As the house holds an aura of mystery for him, he usually slows down on his daily late afternoon jog to take a closer look. But on this particular Friday afternoon, Brandon is shocked when he sees a man shove a screaming woman from the cupola of the beach house. Brandon and his girlfriend, Amberly find themselves deeply meshed in an intriguing mystery that involves a kidnapping, complicated evil versus good twin theory, complex characters, and an attempt on Brandon's life. This amateur duo helps police authorities and FBI agents solve the puzzling but entertaining Pink Beach House mystery. Brandon Sterling is my name, and teaching is my game, along with a bit of amateur sleuthing. It was a year ago on Friday, April 29th, that I was enjoying my late afternoon jog on a secluded area of the beach and approaching an, int an intriguing two-story pink beach house that held an aura of mystery. I've never considered myself even remotely psychic, but on my jog that day, I would find that my interest in the house indicated that I'd have some precognitive vibes. As always, I turned to look at the interesting two-story house surrounded by a high pink stucco wall with wraparound porches and stairs that lead up to the cupola. Up until then, I'd never observed anyone there, so I was excited to see the silhouette of a person turned towards the ocean using binoculars. Jogging in place, I stopped to take a better look. The person appeared to be a petite woman. A few seconds later, another taller person appeared directly behind her. My heart, already racing from my jog, picked up a few more beats when I heard a piercing scream. Horrified, I watched the woman plunge to the ground. Though I realized I could be placing my life in jeopardy, I ran up the sand dune and on to the boardwalk that led to the beach house. I pushed at the ornate iron gate with all of my strength, but it was locked. I could see through the widely spaced bars and notice someone lying prone on the immaculate lawn. I decided to climb to the other side. And dropping after the ground, I rushed over to the motionless form. I had been cor correct in my assessment. She was a young petite female with dark shoulder length hair, wearing a yellow blouse and matching shorts. She was totally still. I was afraid her neck might be broken, so I didn't dare move her. I assumed she had been pushed through the open space of the cupola by her assailant. I reached for her wrist and felt no pulse. But my pulse was racing, a fast, steady beat in my ears. I left my cell phone in my car approximately three miles away, so I couldn't call 911. Unless the assailant had run down the stairs and disappeared while I was running up the sand dune and boardwalk, I figured he or she must still be in the cupola. I made a quick decision not to pound on the front door to ask for help because the assailant might be the owner of the beach house. I had no choice but to run back to my car and call the police. I sprinted to the iron gate and lifted the hinge lock 
that slid into the wall from the inside. At least I wouldn't need to climb it again. Turning around to take another look, I almost drowned in my adrenaline when I observed a tall, blonde male wearing sunglasses and a white shirt and shorts running down the stairs. Of course, he must have been wrong. I hope that you will look on my website and look on Amazon and you'll want to read the rest of Incident at the Pink Beach House. Thank you again for visiting my website.